Can you check for scoliosis yourself? Diagnosing scoliosis isn't always a simple process. Diagnosing scoliosis involves a combination of physical examination and imaging, typically x-ray results. Now the physical examination typically involves a scoliosis screening, which is taking a patient's family history and medical history, observing the patient's gait and posture, and then you can tell a lot about a patient when you see how they walk and how they hold themselves, but then it typically ends being something called Adams Forward Bending Test, which is a gold standard for scoliosis screening. Now, even though it's a gold standard, I find that Adams Forward Bending Test can miss a lots of types of scoliosis cases. Adams Test involves the patient standing in front of the examiner and have them bend forward or hinging forward at the hips. So their arms are kind of dangling at their sides and their back is kind of parallel to the floor. And the idea is that they're rounding their mid back. And this position, the thoracic curvatures are highly visible. And any type of trunk asymmetry, especially in the rib cage, becomes more visible. And when you combine this with the use of a scoli meter, you can actually measure something called trunk rotation in degrees saying how much trunk rotation actually exists. However, this is still not enough to say there's an official scoliosis. You still have to have an x-ray to see that if the trunk rotation is occurring because of a curvature in the spine, and that's normally you know, an x-ray to needed. Where an Adams test fails is where it fails in diagnosing lumbar curves because lumbar curves don't affect the rib cage so much. And a lot of times when they bend forward, you're not going to see any deviation in the rib cage and the lumbar spine, you're not going to really notice it too much when they bend forward and they can go undiagnosed. Now an x-ray is when you actually can see inside and the x-ray is what needs to be taken to diagnose a scoliosis. And this confirms the unnatural bend, but it also confirms the rotation, because we know scoliosis is a three-dimensional condition. It's normally a bend with a rotation in the concavity. And the x-ray is also needed to confirm something called the Cobb angle, which is something that we use to help determine the severity. The Cobb angle measurement needs to be at least 10 degrees or greater to be diagnosed with scoliosis. And the Cobb angle involves drawing lines from the topmost tilted vertebra to the bottommost tilted vertebra and comparing these tilts in degrees. And the higher the degree or the higher the Cobb angle, the more severe the scoliosis is. And we know scoliosis can range in severity from mild to moderate to severe to very severe. The Cobb angle classifies the severity in terms of where the, and also where the scoliosis is located, which really helps dictate our treatment plans on how we're gonna treat and manage a scoliosis. Now, can you check for scoliosis at home? An x-ray is needed to officially diagnose scoliosis, but what are some things that you can do at home to see if the scoliosis is possibly developing? Now, there is no treatment guarantees, but if you do detect scoliosis early and you intervene early, we know conservative treatment success is definitely more likely. And especially in reducing the scoliosis in children when they're most likely gonna be developing and worsening during these rapid stages of growth. Of, gro of growth. And in children, the most common thing we tend to see is postural changes. And first, often we tend to see asymmetrical shoulders, asymmetrical waist, asymmetrical rib cage, some kind of asymmetry. The most common story I tend to hear from, from patients is that you know they were going in the pool, they were going to the beach, and they saw their son or daughter in a bathing suit, and they noticed, hey, something's not right with the shape of their body. It's not that the child comes to you complaining of pain or discomfort, saying they can't do something because they have scoliosis. In fact, many ki kids with scoliosis experience no discomfort, no pain. It's only posture asymmetry. And since most most kids are being checked by their pediatrician once every year, 12 months goes by, a lot of growth can happen, especially for girls that go through rapid growth phases. So a lot of things can change from one visit to the next. So if you're not checking them, look for posture asymmetry. The most critical time for girls is between 10 and 14. For boys, it's between 12 and like 16. This is when they, we expect those kids to go through their growth spurts, and this is when the curves can tend to worsen. Now in adult patients, the main symptom that brings 
brings on diagnosis is pain. But there are patients that have pain that don't have scoliosis. So how do you know if your pain is a result of scoliosis? It's almost the same thing. You have to look for your posture asymmetry. There's never time or normal time for you to have asymmetrical posture. If you have the same things, asymmetrical waist, asymmetrical shoulders, your rib cage looks different from one side to the other, your arms are hanging at different lengths, and you don't look like you're centered and you're experiencing pain, well, it could be a result of scoliosis. And the reason why scoliosis becomes painful in the adult form is because of the compressive nature of scoliosis that occurs as a result of gravity. During growth, the person's adapting very quickly to their development or their uh, or the progression of scoliosis because they're kind of growing around the curve. In the adult form, the curve is progressing because of gravity pressing down. This compression leads to pain and discomfort. Now, we know the condition has early signs that can be checked from home, but however, to be truly diagnosed with scoliosis, you need a physical examination performed by a medical professional, and then you also need to have an imaging performed, and typically, it's a scoliosis x-ray. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we, we want to diagnose scoliosis as soon as possible, and we also want to respond to that diagnosis with intervention because we know if we treat curves when they're small, the curve is more likely to respond to treatment and we're more likely to prevent any serious curve progression or any serious effects as a result of the scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.